Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. A lot can change in a decade. People can lose their jobs, friendships can fall apart, and shoulders can be confused with steak sandwiches. So what were you getting up to 10 years ago? Pokemon, GCSEs, crying yourself to sleep? Let's take a look at the Premier League from 10 years ago because we've got nothing better to do today. It was a very different place. David Moyes had a career for one thing. Arsenal. So where were Arsenal 10 years ago? Not winning a league title, that's for sure. Thierry Henry had just taken off for Barcelona. After looking around the dressing room filled with Nicholas Bentner and Danielson and thinking, please no more of that, the Gunners tossed away the league in February, with William Gallas suffering a patented meltdown and Eduardo's leg turning to silly string. The club would have to wait six more years and endure four more years of Bentner before they won anything of note. During that time, Portsmouth, Birmingham, Swansea and Wigan all won trophies. <laughs> yeah. Bournemouth. Nowadays, Bournemouth employ the likes of Jermaine Defoe and Nathan Ake. Let's take a look at Bournemouth squad from 10 years ago. David Ford. Ugh. Stephen Foley Sheridan. Who? Darren Anderton. What's he still alive? So yeah, I think we know why they were relegated from League One that season. They were also docked 10 points for entering administration with debts of around £4 million. If somebody had told them where they'd be in 10 years time, that person would have been carted off to the nearest insane asylum. Brighton. Brighton and Hove Albion absolutely hats off to you for managing your way into this division. Especially considering you were hailed for finishing 7th in League One 10 years ago. A position occupied by Southend United last season. So, you never know, we might be seeing the Shrimpers in the Premier League soon enough. Not bloody likely. Burnley. Burnley may not be the most glamorous place to live, but to be fair to them, they've done remarkably well in gaining promotion to the Premier League. And all without Danny Ings. Remember him? I'd say his own mother has probably forgotten who the hell he is at this stage. But 10 years ago, they were a championship also ran. They had a goal Keeper always looked like he just got out of bed. Their top scorer was Andy Gray. No, not the one who's probably hated by women nationwide. As well as Andy Cole scuttling towards the end of his career. Apparently he'd like to be called Andrew. Anyway, Andy Cole scored 13 goals for Burnley that season, and they finished 13th in the Championship. Mid-table in the Championship. Is there a more pointless existence than that? Oh yeah, that's that's right. Chelsea. Ten years ago, Chelsea sacked Jose Mourinho for basically sneezing in the wrong direction. They had a bit more cause to get rid of him eight years later, considering they were near the bottom of the table around Christmas time. But in September 2007, it was a farcical decision. Despite an almost player mutiny and the appointment of Toad from Toad Hall, the club still managed to come within two points of the title, a Jonathan Woodgate header of the League Cup, and a John Terry slip of the Champions League. So they won nothing, basically, is what I'm... is what, what I'm getting at. I can't remember how Mourinho got on in his next club. Alright, that was it. Yeah, that was a terrible, terrible decision. Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace now might be in the business of forking out 30 million strikers, appointing disgraced England managers, and handing out jobs to former Inter Milan bosses. But it wasn't always like that. Ten years ago, Neil Warnock was forced to drain blood from a Sean Derry-shaped stone with Clinton Morrison, remember him, scoring 16 goals as the Eagles finished fifth in the championship. They ultimately lost to Bristol City in the playoffs and would have to wait five more years to get up. Everton. At 2007, the days when David Moyes actually had a career and some modicum of respect in the football world. Whereas now, he'd be looking if you didn't get laughed out of the shop whenever he pops out for a pint of milk. The Toffees finished 5th during the 07-08 season, with new signing Yakubu bagging 21 goals in all competitions. Julian Lescott popped up with 10 goals, Tim Cahill beat the p*** out of a few corner flags, and Everton finished with a record haul of 65 points. Not bad. Huddersfield Town. Tell me 10 years ago the Huddersfield Town- no. Tell me last season the Huddersfield Town would end up in the Premier League and I'd say that's great. I'll be off to marry Jessica Alba any minute now. Well, they're, they're promoted now and I, I- I don't think she's going to call. During the 07-08 season, they finished 10th in League One and sacked their manager on April Fool's Day. However, the biggest story of that season was that Dean Hoyle joined the board before becoming chairman the following year and the rest, as they say, is history. Leicester City. During the 07-08 season, Leicester City went through about six different managers, including Ian Holloway. Yep, the same man who looks like he spends his free time forcing cats to fight each other in his shed. The Foxes were relegated to League One in May 2008. Within seven years, they'd be champions of England. Danny Simpson has a medal. Wes Morgan is a Premier League winning captain. I, I... I don't understand it. Liverpool. There was a time that the top four was sealed up, never to be opened, like a Christmas card to a dead relative. Liverpool finished the 07-08 season 11 points ahead of Everton in fifth, with Fernando Torres scoring 33 goals in his debut season. Oh, and the club reached the Champions League final too. Don't ask them how it went. So what's happened in the decade since? Well, Rafa Benitez has been sacked, still not really sure why, replaced by some lad they found down the post office. Then they got King Kenny, who spent £35 million on Andy Carroll. Uh, nearly won the league under Brendan Rodgers. So, Jurgen Klopp, over to you. I'm sure it'll be different with him, right? A anyone? Anyone?
Man City. Man City pre-takeover is like that supermodel who desperately wants nobody to look at her old Facebook photos. You know, back when she was covered in spots and grease. Or in Man City's case, Darius Vassell and Rolando Bianchi. I mean, come on, Joey Barton managed to juggle beating up his own teammates to finish top scorer. They scored 10 goals at home all season, and Georgia Samaras was actually paid to score goals. A genuine tree would have done a better job. And they also finished the season with an 8-1 defeat at Middlesbrough. The money could not have come quicker. Man United. Ten years ago, Manchester United were the best team in the world, that's just a fact. With Ronaldo, Rooney and Tevez up front, before all of them decided they wanted out, the club beat Chelsea to both the Premier League and the Champions League, who would have predicted that within a decade they'd also pinched their manager. They might not be the Manchester United of old, but with the addition of Romelu Lukaku, they have a menacing frontman. And they also have the pace of Marcus Rashford, who is probably collecting Pokemon cards back in 2007. Newcastle. Ah, oh, Newcastle. Ten years ago, that club was full of optimism. Titus Bramble's reign of terror had finally ended. The club had finally hired a competent Premier League manager, and he was to be backed by a new owner who embraced the fans' warmth. Newcastle conspired to somehow lose to the worst Premier League side of all time. Honestly, I could probably pick 11 of our subscribers, throw them together, and they'd have probably beaten Derby County that season. Allardyce was quickly sacked, and the following decade was mostly chaos for the club, including two relegations and three years of Musa Sissoko. Oh, and Ashley is still there. Southampton. Southampton have been stuck in the top eight of the Premier League for the last four seasons, which is quite remarkable considering they were in League One seven seasons ago. During the 07-08 season, they were finishing 20th in the Championship, avoiding relegation by the skin of their teeth. George Burley was sacked in January, so the man who managed to keep them in the division at Leicester City's expense was none other than Nigel Pearson. Bit ironic, that one. Stoke City. I wonder if people were still making jokes about players being able to do it on a cold night of Stoke 10 years ago. Probably because that joke seems to have been around since the dawn of time, and it never gets old. The 07 08 season was the year that Stoke were promoted to the Premier League. With Tony Poulos dragging a snarling, brutish beast into the top flight, armed with the brute force of Ryan Shawcross, the tenacity of Glenn Whelan, and the pointlessness of Sholan Miobi, Poulos steered the club to second place. Oh, and he basically told Roy Dlap to forget about being a footballer and concentrate on his javelin throwing abilities. And it actually seemed to work. Ten years later, Poulos might have gone, but incredibly, the Potters still remain. Except the ones of Voldemort killed. Swansea City. Swansea, who cares? Honestly, who gives a solid sh- Swansea finished top of League One during the 07-08 season, with Jason Scotland top scoring for them with 24 goals. Notable players included Joe Allen, Gary Monk, Angle Rangel, and Leon Britton. All of whom would stick around for the Welsh side when they got promoted to the Premier League. So there you go, that's your wrap for all the legions of Swans fans out there. Tottenham. Tottenham may be one of the most exciting teams in the country right now, but cast your mind back 10 years ago. And they were a side who were finishing behind the likes of Portsmouth, Blackburn and West Ham. Two of those teams are in League One now. With Harry Kane and Deli Alley having yet to take up shaving back in 2007, Spurs had to make do with the likes of Alan Hutton, Jermaine Genus, and oh good god it gets worse, Pascal Chimbanda. Adel Trapped was being tipped to be the future Zidane, but his fondness for late night kebabs and an unwillingness to pass the ball made a mockery of that. However, little did Spurs know that within their ranks they were harboring one of the most valuable players in world football. Not bad for a supposedly cursed left back who looked like he failed an audition for Planet the apes, Watford. So Watford have just spent 18 million pounds on Andre Gray, which is the equivalent of me spending 20 quid on a packet of crisps. Ten years ago, the club were stuck in the championship, having just been relegated from the Premier League. Their centre-back would go on to be arrested for alleged assault, their winger would go to jail for sexual activity with a teenager, and their centre-forward, oh god, we'll be here all day with him. But at least they've decided to do some background checks on their signings these days. Oh wait, uh... <laughs> Never mind. West Brom. Ten years ago, West Brom, led by the promising Tony Mowbray, who's 2007, alright, won the championship title, presumably wondering how on earth they'd managed to lose to Derby County in the playoffs the season before. They also reached the FA Cup semi-final, losing to eventual winners... Portsmouth. Yeah, it was a weird season. West Ham. Ten years ago, West Ham fans waved goodbye to Carlos Tevez and Javier Mascherano and gave a big warm hello to Julian Faubert and Nigel Quashi. It was a strange time to be a West Ham fan. They finished the 07 08 season in 10th. Not bad considering their wage bill was almost as big as the treatment room. At least one thing hasn't changed, and that's the presence of Mark Noble. There is no getting rid of that man. In another 10 years, he'll probably still be there. You'll have to drag him out of that club. He's like that old fellow who gets let out of Shawshank. Oh, that took a dark turn actually. Mark, you'll be fine. Just before I wrap this up, let's be honest, most of you have switched off already and got on with the rest of your lives. I wanted to take a look at the managers from that season and see how many of them are still in work. My guess is hardly any because it was 10 years ago. Arsene Wenger, still at Arsenal and boy isn't everyone real happy about that. Martin O'Neill, currently the manager of the Republic of Ireland and yes, we are going to the World Cup. Alex McLeish, tipped for big things in 2007, currently unemployed having recently been sacked by Egyptian club Zamalek. 
Mark Hughes, clinging to his job at Stoke City by the skin of his teeth. Sammy Lee, first team coach of Crystal Palace, but probably still staring at the front door hoping for his master to return. Gary Megson, back at West Brom, where he's being paid to pick up training cones and take orders from Tony Pulis. Jose Mourinho, at Manchester United. Anyone? Anyone see that coming? And you're all lawyers. Abram Grant, unemployed, having recently resigned as manager of Ghana. Billy Davies, has spent the last three years looking for a job, has not found one yet. Paul Jewell, has probably been waiting in the dole queue for the last five years. David Moyes, unemployed, having recently been sacked by Sunderland. Roy Hodgson. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, Iceland. Never gets old. Laurie Sanchez. Most recently sacked by Apollon on Smyrny FC. Who? That was three years ago. Rafa Benitez. In the Premier League with Newcastle. Not the Champions League final, but you never know. I do. I, I, I do know. Sven Jorn Eriksson. Unemployed, having spent the last five years raking in the dollar bills in China. Sir Alex Ferguson. Officially the most successful man down his golfing club. Garrett Southgate. The England manager. I'm still trying to work that one out. Sam Allardyce. Retired, apparently. Kevin Keegan, has not worked in nine years, probably still a Cisco-fueled nightmares. Harry Redknapp, his knees have miraculously recovered to take a job at championship side Birmingham City. Steve Koppel, working in the Indian League with Jamshedpur FC. Roy Keane, pretending Saipan never happened to work for the FAI as Martin O'Neill's number two. Martin Yule, unemployed, most recently left Egyptian club Al Ali. Juan De Ramos, in China with Tianyin Teda, where he manages John Obi Mikel. Lucky man. Alan Kerbishley, God knows. Does his wife even know? Steve Bruce, how much longer do you give my villa? Another week? Chris Hutchins. Like Jewel, his career pretty much ended five years ago. So of the 27 managers that season, only four are still in the top flight. Of the 20 teams in the league that year, 11 of them are in the lower divisions. So what's the Premier League going to look like in the next 10 years? Who are going to be the clubs that will have dropped out? Who will be the select few managers that will have survived? As always lads, let us know. Anyway, cheers for watching lads. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, give it a share, and I'll talk to you in a while.